Hey everyone, Brian Zane here with my AEW Dynamite review for Wednesday, August 17th, 2022. For those of you who are watching this review and not listening on the SoundCloud, you can see in the background here that I've got a kind of a sparse set right now. Uh, I am in the process of a big move. The family and I are packing everything up and we are moving up to Oregon a week from tomorrow night as of this recording. So no pressure on getting everything done and you know ready for the move, basically. It's been a big process. We're very very excited about it and uh, there might be a bit of a disruption in the content flow on this channel starting next week. I mean, I think you know, there won't be a This Week in Regret next week. There probably won't be a Dynamite review next week because that's the big load-in day for our truck, uh, but you know, I'll do what I can. Basically, the Wednesday videos are still going to drop as scheduled, so your, your long forms and your classic pay-per-view reviews. Pal Pro Wrestling still going to drop on Monday mornings, so as of right now, there's not going to be too much uh, disrupted but there will be a bit of a, a lack in content just for a little bit. Hopefully by the week after next, I'll be set up to the point where I can get back into a regular schedule. So uh, thank you for your patience with that. Things are, you know, it's a bit of a transition, so bear with me on this one. But I'm very excited for what the future is going to hold for us in our new home. But with that out of the way, let's get on with this big review for a big dynamite. The world champion CM Punk's in the house. We saw him make his long away to return last week after taking time off with an injury. But he's back. He opens the show this week to a great ovation. First things first, he opens his promo by challenging Hangman Page to a rematch right then and there, but like he doesn't respond. He's not ready. And so like Punk's, oh, he's that, that's coward shit, not cowboy shit. Like John Silver posted a tweet showing like Hangman hanging out with him at catering like, at the moment that happened. So I guess that's the explanation as to where Page was in that. It's kind of a heel move by Punk here to start things off, but he's definitely throwing heaters from here on out because he turns his attention to John Moxley. He says he's got Moxley's number. He's the real AEW champion. He says Moxley is the third best wrestler in his own group, which is a pattern, a recurring theme in his career. Like, whoa, like, man, shots fired big time here. Then for whatever reason, he takes a shot at Eddie Kingston saying that you're the third best Eddie I've shared a locker room with and the second best Kingston. Like, whoa, it's crazy. Goes back to Moxley and says that, you know, you're not the first John that I've beaten for a championship in Chicago and you're not even the number one in that category either. John Moxley finally finally appears here and uh, CM Punk responds by doing snow angels in the ring. I am loving what CM Punk is delivering here in this promo because it is just, it's all over the place and it's got me feeling so many emotions. It's so wild. So Mossy shows up and he says that Punk is uh, writing checks with his mouth that his body can't cash, bringing up his injury history and everything. Moxley says he's the heart and soul of AEW. CM Punk's like, fine, I'll be the dollars and cents. And Moxley responds with, we all know the reason you signed with AEW is because you ran out of money. Moxley wants to start something with him, but Punk says if he touches Moxley, he'll just bleed all over him. Moxley gives Punk a peck on the cheek, and the two start swinging. It's the Effie effect in full display here. But it's a big pull-apart brawl. Many times they're pulled apart. They start fighting again, pulled apart again, and it goes on like that for a couple of minutes before it ends, uh, before the segment ends. Like, wow, what a crazy opening segment to kick things off on the right foot with Punk and Moxley. I mean, this was just a great way to just establish, bam, big old time here with the two of them going into All Out. Um, I think, you know, both guys had some good shots on the promos, but Punk especially was pretty ridiculous. Uh, this was great. I really loved it. A great way to start the show. After the break, Tony Schiavone interviewing Powerhouse Hobbs, asking basically, why Hobbs, why? Why'd you turn your back on Ricky Starks? And Hobbs saying, you know, two weeks ago, Ricky Starks showed his true colors by saying it was okay. He was okay with losing. He's not okay with losing, so he was mad about that. And of course, he was there to help Ricky retain the FCW championship and hold on to the belt for so long, but then he couldn't hold up his end of the bargain. So now he's breaking backs and necks, as it turns out. He also says he's got something big in store for QT Marshall and the factory. So where does Powerhouse Hobbs, you know, he's got a lot of things he's doing right now. He's feuding with Starks, got something going on with the factory, but I like the emphasis on Hobbs here. I think, you know, uh, I'm, I'm not just speaking from a place of personal bias, having worked with him, but I think that he's got a lot of great upside and potential, and I think that he could be a great hoss for AEW. I can't wait to see what he's going to do in the singles capacity. Then the opening contest, a two out of three falls match as the American Dragon Brian Danielson takes on the Dragon Slayer Daniel Garcia and the guest timekeeper is Ricky the Dragon Steamboat keeping in theme with the big synergy of the Game of Thrones show with a dragon. I don't know the name of it. I'm sorry. I didn't really pay attention to that part, but that's what the match is, uh, is sponsored by here essentially and this is a great matchup. This is just great kind of knocky draggy 
physical, almost hard to watch at times because of how they lay into each other. But man, it's satisfying to watch though. Great work by both guys here. In the first fall, Garcia spikes Danielson with a pile driver, knocks him out with a dragon sleeper. Danielson falls asleep, and so the first fall is awarded to Garcia. But then there's like no rest period. They go right to the next fall, and, Gar and Danielson's got to fight to get regain consciousness in time, which I thought was a bit much. Like, I think it did add a little bit of drama to that second beginning of the second fall, but it's still a weird choice to have him like pass out and like, not even have like, not even a 30 second rest period would have been nice, I guess. A DDT on the floor by Garcia during the break and Garcia goes to the sleeper again, but Danielson's able to kind of squeeze out of it and get him on a surprise roll up to win the second fall. And then there's a really brutal looking spot near the end where they're kind of, they're pulling each other chest first into the ring post on the outside. Stomps aplenty between both men, some more struggling, and ultimately Danielson's able to get the label lock in and uh, also puts uh, uh, puts Garcia out. So Danielson wins the uh, two falls in a row to win the matchup here. We get this kind of showing of respect and good sportsmanship between the two of them there. Or Danielson wants to shake the hand. He gives him his props and the, cr and the crowd's definitely behind Garcia. But then before they shake hands, Chris Jericho, who by the way has been doing commentary for this match, he jumps Danielson. Garcia pulls him off of him, which gets a big pop. And then there's kind of this moment here where Jericho kind of puts his finger in Daniel's face and he slaps it away. There's a big, you're a wrestler chant. Like the fans want him to kind of like come back to the light side, essentially. Stay away from sports entertainment and, and become a wrestler again. And, you know, there's this moment here where Garcia seems really conflicted as to what he is to do. And then we find out later in the show, Jericho wants to, you know, wants an answer from Garcia next week. Whose side is he on? And so that promo happens. And I, I will say a great part about that backstage bit where they establish the next week thing is that Ricky Steamboat shows up after the fact and puts over Garcia saying that Daniel Bri that Brian Danielson should be his mentor basically and Jericho kind of like you know, brushes him off and walks away and then you've got uh, Angelo Parker of the JAS kind of getting in Steamboat's face and Steamboat just chops him and he's like look at me now like oh man that was a great moment too but yeah great match star making performance for Garcia again even in defeat still looking like still looking great here and the fans definitely want to see him break away from the Jericho Appreciation Society. We see Swerve in our glory and private party backstage to to hype their upcoming tag title match this Friday and uh, Swerve telling the guys to respect their elders and Isaiah Cassidy at one point getting in Keith Lee's face and Lee just produces a stick of gum as his response, which that was pretty funny. And up next, we're supposed to get a match with Tony Nese versus somebody, but it never happens because John Moxley runs out and jumps Nice and Mark Sterling knocks them both out, gets into the ring and calls out CM Punk. Let's do this title unification match right here and now. Punk comes back out. We have another pull apart brawl with the two of them. So things keep picking up and I love that Claudio Castagnoli shows up here and he just like manhandles Moxley to keep him away. Picking him up like a small child and it's, just, it's a very impressive visual to see there for sure. But that's the continuing saga and then we find out later in the show that oh, they're going to give that title match away not all out in September, but they're going to do it next week on Dynamite, which is crazy for me to think about here. It's like they're really going to give that big match away next week. It's going to be big, I think, but like, then what do you do? What do you, it's like, this is a classic case of, you know, blowing your wad on TV before building up for a pay-per-view. This is a big gambit here. Who knows what the make good's going to be or what will you put in that place if you don't have this match? So... Time will tell. Big risk. We'll see if it ha we'll see if it, they, they can pull it off. Up next, the Gun Club take on the Varsity Blondes. And as I'm trying to figure out just what the hell are Austin and Colton wearing to the ring, the match is over before it really begins. It's like a squash match. If it's longer than 40 seconds, I'd be surprised. Colton hits the Colt 45 onto Griff Garrison for he and Austin to win in emphatic fashion. Then afterward, Billy Gunn in the ring complimenting them, saying, hey, this is the fire I wanted to see from you guys. I'm really proud of you for turning it around. They hug it out. But then Stokely Hathaway appears on the stage, and then Austin and Colton beat up their own dad. They beat up Daddy Ass, the, the, the betrayal at two Austin and Colton. So they beat him up for a bit, and then you've got uh, the acclaimed showing up. They chase off the gun club, and there's this moment here where, you know, Anthony Bowen's throwing up the scissors and yelling, Scissor me, Daddy Ass. Big pop when Billy Gunn does it. Oh my God. It was, it was again, the euphoria felt by the crowd here when the acclaimed and Billy Gunn reunite. And uh, yeah, interesting, interesting little detour here. I'm surprised that they would have the gun club turn on their dad like that. I mean, to put him with Stokely Hathaway and have that kind of dramatic 
dramatic thing. That's kind of a big deal, I would think. You know, beating up your own dad just to like get ahead in wrestling and stuff. What devious shit that would be like. So it is. It, I wonder, you know, where they must have plans. I would think for these guys if they're going to break him away in such a dramatic fashion and pair up with Stokely, who is constantly recruiting people. So we'll just have to wait and see. But yeah, the pop for the Scissor Me Daddy Ass and the whole thing with the acclaimed of Billy Gunn that was great. There's a video package of Sanjay Dutt, Jay Lethal, and Satnam Singh. Sanjay is hopping mad at Wardlow and FTR, and he wants them in a trios match at All Out. We do get a response from those guys later in the show where they, they accept the challenge, and they also bring up the fact that they were in Pinnacle together. I'm like, wow, I totally forgot that was a thing. Like, what a big missed opportunity the Pinnacle was. Anyway, I think it's, like, wise for them to kind of space out Wardlow and FTR's, like, title business for the time being. Although now that they've, you know, moved Punk and Moxley up to next week and, you know, who knows what the replacement for that's going to be at the pay-per-view. Then we see the Death Triangle backstage. Pac says that he has unfinished business with Will Ospreay and the rest of the United Empire. And so they'll see them next week in Cleveland. Hmm. Then we see Jungle Boy making his way to the ring for a rare solo all-by-himself promo. Luchasaurus has been written off, suspended uh, in kayfabe for, for headbutting Pat Buck backstage. And so Jungle Boy talks about the heat that he got two weeks ago when he wore the shirt that said Christian is a pussy. Uh, Man, the fans given poor Jack the, the what treatment during this promo, which I think is unfortunate, but talks about how he's been chasing Christian Cage, how Christian's been running, challenges him to a match at All Out, and then uh, Christian Cage responds. He shows up on stage. He says no, because he says things have gotten too out of hand, things have gotten too personal. He says Jungle Boy made it more personal, or he was the one getting personal, which I think was great. He also said, yeah, I'm just so proud of you. Your confidence is so high now, because a year ago, you were like the people of Charleston, West Virginia. You could barely form a sentence, which is a great heel line. I love that. But Christian tries to appeal to Jungle Boy and says, you know, like, let's team back up. You're like a son to me. I love you, Jack. Let's hug it out. And so, you know, Jungle Boy teases it for a second, but then he just takes him down, starts laying into him. Christian fights back for a minute, but it's all Jungle, it's all jungle Jack here. He just, like, violently beats up Christian here. He like stomps his arm in the steps, throwing him into the steps, slamming his head against the steps and all this stuff. Like it's a side of Jungle Boy we haven't seen before. And I think that was really powerful to see that. And I think I wouldn't be surprised if their match at All Out had some kind of stipulation attached to it to really kind of amp up the personal animosity this match has. Uh, but yeah, I thought it was a great segment. Uh, J- uh, you know, Jungle Boy, despite the fans saying what, I don't think that was uh, an indictment on his promo skills. I think he did fine. And again, the, the physicality and the way that whole thing broke down and showing that he's not a dummy and, you know, didn't get suckered into Christian's trap and really kind of stood tall that one. I thought that was really, really strong stuff for him. Kylan King taking on the number one contender for the women's championship, Tony Storm, in singles action. Uh, good back and forth in this thing. I really have no huge notes about it, although I will say Tony did a great job throughout this match making King look good. I mean, actually, I think it was kind of a collaborative effort because I think the commentary team did a good job building King up as well talking about her win streak on you know dark and everything trying to remind you trying to remind you guys so I think that she was really strong as Tony ultimately Tony hits the sweet cheeks music the big hip attack in the corner and hits a series of moves ending up with a big DDT to win the match here so good competitive action then we cut backstage to Thunder Rosa who's kind of watching the match and due to kind of a golf clap for her you know supposed friend Tony and we find out later that that match is official for all out it is uh, Thunder Rosa versus Tony Storm for the championship. Obviously, you know, this seems like a very kind of obvious where this is going to go, where the friends are going to be driven, a wedge will be driven between them over the championship, and uh, they get a little too competitive. I, that's something I'm really curious to see, is how this relationship will continue to degenerate over their, their equal desire for the championship. Your main event is the Trios Championship Tournament quarterfinal match as LFI, Andrade El Idolo, Dragon Lee, and Roosh take on the Young Bucks and their mystery opponent, not much of a mystery is kind of the worst kept secret of the past week in wrestling. It's Kenny Omega, the former AEW champion, making his long-awaited return. Got the big introduction from Justin Roberts with North Carolina. It was great stuff, you know, like uh, addressing multiple injuries during his hiatus, which still not fully recovered from. Looking at him, he was wearing the compression top 
and had a shoulder brace on. So it's like he still looks a bit beat up, but a lot of the old Kenny was definitely there in this matchup. And the ovation that he got was absolutely insane. And so I think it was a great moment. Almost brought a tear to my eye seeing that kind of emotion and the, uh, the, the elation brought about by the fans on this one. Omega's tagged in pretty early in the match in the first couple of minutes. And again, the fans are totally on board for that. Uh, takes a lot of the heat in this one too. It's kind of one of those like two hot tag deals where Kenny Omega takes a lot of the heat in the first portion of it. Hot tag to Matt. We got a nice like triple vertical suplex spot there. Then Matt begins to take a lot of the heat. So then there's more, you know, work from the heels there during the second commercial break. Uh, coming out of the commercial break, they plug the BattleBots show and JR calling Kenny a BattleBot was something that I didn't think it was going to make me laugh as much as it did, but that was a tremendous call. Omega is tripped up by Jose, the assistant, who then does kind of the finger guns thing afterwards, which I thought was pretty funny. And with some help from the baddies, you got Dragon Lee with a big plancha onto Omega off like the barricade into the outside. Uh, we get that, that the two guys fighting and they fall backward into the pinfall breakup spot which I hate, but that's just kind of the way it is now. Omega with one winged angel to Dragon Lee to win the match for his team. So yeah, this was a fun main event full of the stuff you've come to know and love or hate from the elite, basically. If this is your kind of match, then this was your kind of match, honestly. I don't know how better way to say it. It was great to see Omega back in action. Then like right before they go off the air, we see Andrade hitting the Hammerlock DDT on his own partner, Dragon Lee, right in front of Rouge. So it's like no time to process that or figure out what's going on on before we fade to black, but that's certainly a wrinkle they decided to throw in there. And they must have been like heavy on time, so we gotta get it through at some point, you know, and then they'll address it later, I guess. But yeah, where does Rouge sit in all this? Because yeah, that's his younger brother who got destroyed by Andrade after the match. So where will Rouge's allegiance lie? Will he stay in LFI? You know, what's that gonna look like? But yeah, like I said, fun main event. I think it was even more so more of an experience because of that return of Kenny Omega, which even though most people could see it coming from a mile away based on the last couple of weeks of storytelling, still incredibly gratifying to see. And again, as long as Kenny is healthy and is able to go, despite looking like kind of quasi-mummified at this point, hopefully if he can keep going, then I think it's a great boon for AEW. My grade for this week's Dynamite is an A. I loved this episode. You know, I sound like a broken record given Dynamite's high scores and stuff, but I mean, I am liking what I'm seeing here. I mean, it's not just AEW though. WWE is also putting out great shows. I've been, I've been seeing this. Please know, even though I'm not reviewing Raw and SmackDown, I am still kind of aware of what's going on. And there's a lot of stuff that I'm seeing and hearing about that I'm really liking from WWE. So this is a great time to be a fan. I've said that before and I'll say it again now. And I think it even rings more true because with both companies being run by people who are definitely wanting to show the best of what they can do and Triple H is off to a great start and Tony Khan's trying to, you know, respond in kind. And it's going to, I think it's just leading to really, good shows that I think every wrestling fan of all kinds should be happy to enjoy and be, be able to enjoy at least. There should be something out there among all of the major promotions now that you should be able to like. And I think that um, what we saw here this week is indicative of that, what we're seeing with WWE is putting out as well. So yeah, I have no real complaints about, no legitimate complaints about this episode. Uh, definitely one to check out for sure. A lot of great stuff happening in it. But what did you all think of Dynamite this week, folks? I want to hear about it in the comments section below. Uh, there will probably not be a Dynamite my review next week on account of me getting ready for the move. If that changes, I, you'll obviously be the first to know about it, but stay tuned. And of course, thank you for your patience as I go through the transition of a big move and having to, you know, just basically relocate everything. And that includes figuring out what my set's even going to look like. So that's going to be a fun couple weeks to figure out. But until then, folks, I'm Brian Zane, and I'll see you next time.